And then in Hebrews it says, by this time you ought to be teachers yourselves. Yet there I find I need to sit down with you to go over the basics of God again. Baby's milk when you should have been on solid food. Milk is for beginners and experience in God's ways. Solid food is for the mature who have some practice in telling right from wrong. Now, this is something that we don't always hear a lot about from the pulpit because it could sound like I'm, I'm speaking about you got to work harder, you got to work harder, you got to work harder. No. The idea of grace is that you couldn't earn it, you couldn't get your salvation by earning it, but he does want us to be disciples. And disciples are expected to grow. And he uses this example, milk and meat. By now, by this time, you should be on the meat, but you're still on the milk. So that's okay. There's nothing wrong with saying that if, if somebody's up here speaking as a leader, you would expect them to have a maturity in the Lord. In James 3, it says, don't, don't take this position lightly. Not many should be teachers because there's a higher level of accountability. But all of us, in one way or another, as Christians, are supposed to be disciples of Jesus, right? So, Ray, do you have that uh, video queued up? Okay, so I just want to show a quick less than three-minute video from Dutch Sheets. He showed me a vision a few years ago when I, I was at a worship service. Caught me up in the spirit, and I was looking down at the earth, and I saw a, a circle. And I wondered, what is he trying to show me? This circle on the ground, big circle. And you know, your mind just takes off. I'm like a wheel in the middle of a wheel. I, I, it, I, I don't know. <coughs> then he pulled me from here to here took me from here to here and I was looking at it from the side and I could see that what I was looking at was not a flat circle but a cylinder a spiral from here it looked flat but from here I could see that it was a spiral and he said to me full circle higher level I'm bringing some things full circle, higher level. And there was a lot in me it, in that season that he was showing me that he's going to do again. But when God does something again, he always intends for it to be at a higher level of glory. If it's not going from glory to glory, it's probably not God. Because we go from strength to strength, faith to faith, strength to strength, the Bible says. The path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. We go from glory to glory. So full circle, higher level. And I started preaching about signs and wonders, another, another uh, season of those, harvest, revival, but higher level. And I mentioned this in a meeting. And a spirit-filled messianic rabbi came up to me after the um, meeting, and he said, I was fascinated by that vision. Because he said, uh, that's the way we believe time is in God. Not linearly, but cyclically. He said, I believe you saw time. He said, we even believe that God puts things in time in the sense that it will repeat itself. For example, this, this time every year, Passover season, for example, you can more easily tap into this anointing. If you want to see that video, it's a clip on our YouTube channel and Facebook page. That's the, that's the longer teaching. Um, but the point that I wanted to make is this idea of time, and, and if you think of it as almost like a helix, right, like a DNA or that spiral that he's talking about, that is true about life, right, from birth to toddler, grammar school, early teens. We understand that children develop at, at different rates and that we, we want them to develop. It's not something where we want to maintain control over them in, in the language that, that we use in the Elijah House teaching. It's that they have to individuate. Anybody know, know what that word means? You, you've heard it, learned it? Individuate, stand on their own two feet. And this is difficult, as the children are growing up, you have to let go of a little of that control and, and let them stand on their own two feet and let them make decisions. And, and they, need, they need to learn critical thinking choices, right? 
So this is as time goes by, just as we expect children to take on more responsibility and to make better decisions over things that they should know, well, we're no different as Christians, right? We're, we're going to grow in the things of the Lord, and we're going to get more revelation. But in my father's generation, when people hit 65, they would retire, and often their bodies would just be so broken from all the years of physical labor that they couldn't work anymore. But that's not really true for most of us today. Most of us today can have our best years from 65 to 75 and beyond. Bill Hammond, right? You saw him. 89 years old, still preaching, still traveling. Doris Wagner in her 90s, still traveling. Amputated one of her legs. She doesn't care. She still goes and teaches anyway. All right? I mean, wow, that's amazing. But they set the bar pretty high. I don't want to have to retire. I think I could have a Caleb anointing. How about you? I think every one of us could have a Caleb anointing. We could be the people that say, I'm just as strong now as I was then. The physical body may be breaking down, but not even there necessarily. If I watch my diet, I exercise, I do smart things, watch what I eat, I, I could even prolong the gravity <laughs> trying to take over. But the beautiful thing is in, in this, this circular thinking, like Dutch Sheets was saying, looking at it from the side, is that the older generation is expected to sow into the younger generation. In every area, and that's another way that being together, literally physically sitting next to other Christians, going to fellowship after, going to the baseball night on a Friday night and hanging out with other people, is that you're with like-minded people that you can talk to who will hold you accountable, and we can live life together. That's an essence of the gospel, in the book of Acts especially. But then the older people can then sow into the, their children as parents, right? Then they become parents and grandparents and all the way through, and you see. But again, like what we have to remember is that we can get progressive revelation, and typically we do get progressive revelation as life goes on. If I'm a drug dealer, I can become a better drug dealer. <laughs> I can get the wrong kind of progressive revelation. <laughs> But if I'm a Christian and I'm a minister, I can get more understanding of how God's uh, principles work in the earth and how we can offset them so the drug dealers, the atheists, become missionaries for Jesus. That's, that should be our goal. That should be the mission statement, turning atheists into missionaries. Amen? Boy, there's a bunch of atheists around. So, But there always has been, right? I mean, that's not new. There always has been people. It's right in Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage? Those are the atheists, or the heathen that are raging. Tell God to get off my back. Well, okay, you don't, he wants you to do it voluntarily, but it's the sweetest surrender you can ever make. Yeah. 